We go to Laos with one Korean company and a volunteer group of college students on their mission for a global social contribution. We highlight the government policy to create jobs for the youth population as youth unemployment figures stay unimproved amid Korea's recovering employment numbers. Smart commercials that reflect fewer taste. We introduce the technology behind custom-made commercials. We bring you the success story of one company that makes body composition analyzers and its secret for rising to the top in global market share. This year marks 60 years since the armistice agreement following the Korean War. We find out about the significance and the situation at the time when the armistice agreement was formed. Hello, I'm Andrew Salmon and welcome to BizLine. Now, a critical task for any administration is job creation. But in Korea, the economy is not generating quality work for the nation's youth. In our interview segment, we'll be asking whether the Park and Head government can reverse this problematic trend. However, before we go to that and other features, let's first take a look at all the breaking business and economic stories hitting headlines across South Korea this week. The Korean government has decided to lower acquisition tax rates on home purchases in a bid to reverse the slowdown of the real estate market. The decision comes in the wake of a dispute among the Land, Finance and Public Administration Ministries, which said that details about the new policy, including the amount of the reduction, will be announced in August. The government currently levies a 2% tax on houses valued at around 800,000 U.S. dollars or less and a 4% tax on houses priced above that. Korean wave businesses, including entertainment companies and broadcasters, racked up some 800 million U.S. dollars last year from intellectual property rights. That is a 17.6% jump from the previous year, but overall, Korea is still running a deficit in income from intellectual property rights. Experts say Korea needs to develop more original technology to reduce the intellectual property deficit. The Korea Tourism Organization set a record high of 7.23 million Korean residents traveled overseas, up nearly 10% from the same period last year. The organization explained that a growing boom in leisure and travel contributed to the surge in overseas trips. On the other hand, the number of foreign visitors to Korea rose 3.6%, reaching 5.5 million in the year's first half. Go green or pay the price is the message the Korean government is sending to automakers, saying it'll find companies that don't manufacture fuel-efficient cars. A clause was added to the bill which allows the government to slap fines on auto companies that don't manufacture cars that are kinder to the environment. Business is no longer just about making profits. Publics are demanding that companies act responsibly and contribute to society. And this trend is not limited just to the West. It's also extended to Korea and is impacting Korean companies. In our next segment, we're traveling to Laos to meet a Korean volunteer group sponsored by POSCO who are building a multimedia center for Laotian villagers. We'll see what they're doing, how they're doing, and why they're doing it. In the early hours at the Incheon International Airport, university students have gathered together to serve a purpose of sharing and learning. They are the Happy Builder members, a volunteer group of university students organized by POSCO ENC, and they will be visiting Laos for 10 days to share goodwill and learn through new experiences from the country they had never been to before. 되게 보람차고 값진 경험이 될것 같아요. 이제 우리나라 문화를 알려주는 시간도 있을 테지만 이제 직접 다른 나라에 가서 그 문화를 배운다는 것도 정말 좋은 경험이잖아요. 우리 대학생 봉사단들이 가서 K-팝 문화도 이렇게 보여주고 <웃음> 서로 라오스 친구들과 같이 교류할 수 있는 장이 됐으면 좋겠습니다. They're finally departing for Laos to realize what they had been planning for months. 하나, 둘, 셋, 파이팅! 상방향 문화 교류 활동을 통해서 라오스와 한국 간의 이해도 
도 높이고 어, 저희들 회사뿐만 아니라 국가 이미지를 높일 수 있는 그런 좋은 기회라 생각합니다. Laos, officially known as the Lao People's Democratic Republic, is a landlocked country in Southeast Asia, bordered by Burma and China to the northwest, Vietnam to the east, Cambodia to the south, and Thailand to the west. Nearly 7 million people occupy the territory, with estimated gross domestic product per capita of near 1,600 U.S. dollars. The country also hosted 9th Asia-Europe meeting in late 2012. The volunteers' destination is some 75 kilometers north of Vientiane, the capital of Laos. The tasks awaiting for them at Ponhong are renovating classrooms and improving learning environment for the children, from elementary to high schoolers in Laos. Perhaps it also reflects South Korea's passion for education that have made the country what it is today. The projects were done at three different schools, from repainting the classroom walls to putting in new classroom furnitures. It wasn't all that easy at first, as there was a language barrier to overcome and having to adjust to a new environment. But by working with the people from a different culture, they have also learned the value of cooperation. The day's work wasn't easy, but the warm smile and friendly gestures shown by the people of Ponhong made everything so much better. ผมเรียนหรือว่าอาคารนี้พวกเรานี้นี้พวกเรามีความดีองค์ใจมีความภาคภูมิใจหลายต่อองค์การปุสโกนี้และในตอนนั้นก็คือว่าทั้งองค์
the happy builders headed to Vientiane for a grand event held at the Lao National Culture Hall. People who have gathered under one roof at the event hall spent hours enjoying cultures of both countries, singing popular Korean songs, as well as showing traditional dances of Korea and Laos. They had the chance to experience foods from the two different countries, listen to popular Korean music, and dance to the rhythm. But the people of Korea and Laos weren't the only ones who had the chance to experience each other's culture. Travelers from other countries also took advantage of this special occasion. I think it's an, an amazing festival because I've never really had the chance to experience Korean culture. We've learned the games, the music, the food, the art. We've learned a lot about Korean one hour that we never would have before. The successful event was possible thanks to the students who spent hours practicing before coming to Laos. Laos是一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一
the youth unemployment is uh, about 7%, okay. which is uh, slightly decreased from 8% from the, over the last year. Uh, but that does not mean that labor market is improved. The reason is that uh, the unemployed person is the job is the person without job, as okay. well as those who need to continue to search for the job. But in youth case, many young people give up searching for the job, and then they are not counted as unemployed persons. So if you uh, include those persons, or say discourage the workers. Okay. In that case, uh, I estimate the unemployment rate for youth will be around 15%. 15%, 1-5%. Now that's high, but of course the situation could be even, even worse. Uh, what about the figure for youth underemployed, those who are just in, in part-time work? Uh, that's a typical problematic because the underemployment rate, underemployed person is not captured very well in a statistical office. The people just working one hour per week right. or two hours per week and they are not, I, that is very likely that they are not regarded as the un underemployed person. Probably they are employed persons as long as they work an hour within a week. So uh, in that case, uh, employment rate is the exaggerated as well as unemployment rate is underestimated. Understood. So how serious a problem is youth unemployment in Korea right now, in your opinion? Uh, if you take a look at the labor market participation and the employment rate instead of unemployment rate, those numbers declined by one percent point from the last year. Unemployment rate goes down, those numbers goes down as well. Okay. Okay. That means the many youth people, young people, discouraged a lot Understood. in the labor market. Okay, so this is a serious problem facing yes. Korea, and it's not a problem that's, uh, that's a new one. This has been with us for some time. Mm -hmm. However, my understanding now is that looking at the demographics of the Korean population, from about 2015, mm -hmm. the number of young people in Korea starts to fall mm -hmm. almost off a cliff. It's a very dramatic fall, and Korea becomes a very fast-aging society. Will this demographic change sort of automatically solve the problem? In my opinion, the answer is no. Yeah. The reason is that... Um, well, people might think that you know, the fewer young people, they, are, they find easily the job mm. because that there is a less competition over a job. But uh, there is an important assumption. The yeah. assumption is that the number of jobs is stable or at least unchanged. Okay. Now, the problem is the Korean labor market for youth is that it's not a number of young people in the, in the economy. It's more likely the, the jobs available to, to young people, and those jobs are declined. And something you, you almost touched on just there is employment rates going up when we get a market rebound. We see this in the US, we see this in, the, in Japan, but that's not necessarily the case in Korea. How is it that uh, sort of macroeconomic improvements are not being reflected in the, uh, the employment sector? If you take a look at the relationship between economic growth and employment, there are two important concepts. One is that how output or GDP is related to employment, which is called employment elasticity. Okay. And then the second one is that uh, GDP rate of growth as of itself. Yeah. Now, first, in 1990, we have 0 0.4, the elasticity. That means that there, if there are 1% increase in the GDP, we will have we would have 0.4% in increase in, in employment. In growth, yeah. Now the number declined to 0.2. So even if we have the same GDP rate of growth, we have half employment rate growth. Now the second, uh, GDP rate of growth itself declined a lot in Korea. In 1990s and 80s, you know, if you take a look at the numbers, the number is at the 5% sometimes, or 7% even in a, in a year. But now we're talking about 2%. 2 2%. 2%. 2%. Yeah. So that the GDP rate of growth declined, and then the elasticity, which turned GDP into the employment, declined as well. So there's a big problem. So we're facing a double whammy. Yes. And the second problem is that if you look at 
the industry which drive the economic growth, such as the semiconduct, automobiles, they highly automated. They not use the, as many people as before. As they, right. So that even if we have a high value added in those industries, employment does not respond at all. So that's a big, another problem we okay. have. Now, Korean youth is very, very highly educated, um, one of the great strengths of the Korean workforce. Mm -hmm. But of course, some might even say that today they're too highly educated. There's very, very high emphasis on academic qualifications, on university rankings, and so forth. And one result of this is that many young people are willing to work for the big conglomerates or for public institutions, which have limited positions, but they're less willing to work for slightly less prestigious jobs particularly in, in SMEs. Is this a realistic problem? And if so, is there an answer to it? Well, first think about the educations. The Korean workforce is highly educated. That is nothing wrong with this. If you look at the OECD and other countries, the problem is that many young students drop out of the school and they cause problems. Now we have a lot of adva high advancement rate and they are very highly educated. So that's a good sign. Mm. Now, the problem is that those highly educated people are reluctant to uh, start their careers at the small and medium-sized medium enterprise. There are two reasons for this. The first one, the working conditions such as the wage, fringe benefits, and job stability is far unfavorable compared with the large companies. Now the second one is that once they locked in small and medium-sized firms, there is a little chance for them to move their careers to large companies. So the internal labor market is less mobile. So uh, it's kind of a membership society. Once you are one of the members in the large companies, your life will be good. Once you landed at the small and medium companies, you will end up in the small and medium company, even though you work very hard and excellent. So that membership uh, society, the mobility is very limited. Is there any way to, to solve this problem? I mean, it seems like, again, it's a, a kind of a an example of inflexibility within the market and sociocultural factors are sort of adding to that. The first thing we have to do is that the, we need to reduce the gap between the large company and the small company. And also uh, we need to have a pay system based on what they achieved or what they contribute to the company, not by what they have as a specification or, you know, diploma qualification, yeah. qualifications. All right. Um, let's talk about part-time labor in Korea right now. There's significant labor market inflexibility in Korea, which dissuades employers from hiring. Uh, perhaps as a result, there's a very, very high proportion of part-time workers in Korea. Again, how serious, how significant is this? Uh, we usually think that 50% of the total labor force is the uh, non-regular workers, okay. and among them, uh, approximately 20, 10 to 20 percent is the part-time workers. Okay. So that uh, part-time workers is not rare one, it's, it's common in Korea. And also, um, the problem is that uh, part-time workers are covered by social insurance only 40 percent. Oh, okay. Uh, full-time regular workers usually have a 90 to almost 100 percent covered by social yeah, insurances yeah. such as medical pensions. So they are not covered the social insurance, their job is unstable, and even sometimes they paid lower than minimum wage. So there's a lot of problems in the part-time workers. And are we seeing the numbers of part-time workers rise? Uh, yes, I think the part-time workers is more. The Korea is notorious for overworking. Yeah. We worked uh, 2,200 hours per year. Is that the longest in the OECD, I think? Which yeah. is uh, 500 more on the OECD averages right. per year. And then uh, the government press 
place a lot of pressures to the company to reduce the hours of work. Now, how to reduce the hours of work? Employ the part-timers for the government. That's a good for a company because they can save labor mm. cost. They, you know, they do not. Sometimes they do not provide the social insurance. Sometimes they pay less than regular counterparts. So that uh, part-time work is a likely increase in the Korean labor market. I mean, this is all rather depressing. There are obviously no easy answers to these issues, which are educational, they're economic, they're, they're cultural, they're socio-cultural, and so on. Um, speaking very, very broadly, what do you think the Park and Hare government should do to solve this problem of youth unemployment, uh, speaking big picture? Okay. Uh, I recommend the government to have a longer perspective in approaching and addressing youth employment. Uh, government is usually pumping a lot of money to cre direct, cre directly create a job. Uh, I think this is the job created by public funds is not a decent job. Also, it lasts for a couple of months at most. So the very short term, low quality job create pumping up, financed by you know, the budget. Instead of using the money in that way, I strongly recommend put the more on vocational training and employment service, as well as put the, some more monies on the startups, so, uh, which usually have a long-term effect with a minor short-term effect. But that will help in the long run in solving youth unemployment problems. Well, that's some sound advice. And obviously, this is obviously a very serious issue, and it's one we're going to be facing for the foreseeable future. Um, sobering stuff, but Dr. Kim, thanks for being frank with us. It's been good to have you on BizLine. Thank you. The kind of one-size-fits-all commercial that bombards us every time we turn on our TV or radio can get very irksome very fast. But you may discover when you go online and you click onto your favorite website, the kind of ad that now pops up is a little more amenable to your particular tastes. There's a reason for this. The way ads are being made and distributed is changing. They're now becoming increasingly tailored to specific consumers, specific lifestyles, specific interests, and specific needs. How's this possible? Let's take a look. No one can avoid a never-ending flood of non-target commercials while watching TV. But in tandem with the latest changes in the media environment, the advertising industry has been moving toward new advertising tools. Let's have a close look at the targeted advertising technology. The electronic billboard on the street displays commercials that the passerby could be interested in after instantly analyzing the passerby's personal information. In this movie, the virtual shop manager recognizes a regular customer and recommends clothes that the person would like. And this could happen in the real world, too. Electronics and Communications Research Institute recently developed a targeted advertising technology for TV viewers that can identify and infer viewers based on the analysis of program viewing patterns of the household. When a lady in her 20s sits in front of the TV, soap opera and movie selection screens appear on the TV. Car and whiskey advertisements are shown on the TV, targeting the man in his 40s who sits in front of the TV. The built-in camera in a smart TV enables the TV to selectively show commercials relevant to a viewer by recognizing the gender and the age of the viewer. How is it possible to identify each family member? The answer is in the facial recognition system built in a set-top box. Uh, 
엄마인지 혹은 어, 집에 온 손님인지 그러니까 사, 등록되어 있지 않은 사람인지를 어, 구분해내게 됩니다. 어, 얼굴에 대한 다양한 특징들을 이제 비교해서 누구인지를 어, 비, 어, 식별해내는 기술이 이제 들어가 있고요. That is not all. With this technology, it is possible to identify gender and age of different family members by analyzing their unique viewing patterns and to recommend different products based on interest. 맞춤형 광고 기술은 시청자가 원하는 광고를 제공함으로써 시청자에게 도움이 되는 측면이 있고요. 또 광고주 입장에서는 광고주가 원하는 그 광고 제품의 목표 고객이 있습니다. 이런 목표 고객을 중심으로 해서 광고를 함으로써 광고의 효율을 높여줄 수 있는 장점을 제공합니다. The latest advancements in the facial recognition technology have enabled analysis of not only gender and age, but also facial expressions to identify a person's emotion. In this mobile service trial zone served by one of Korea's telecommunications companies, a person will receive a list of music recommended by a system that recognizes basic human emotion, including joy, anger, sorrow, and pleasure, by reflecting weather condition and time along with the person's facial expression. 사진을 찍어서 제 기분을 인식해서 그거에 따른 다양한 음악을 선곡해 준다라는 게 신선하고 가장 신기했습니다. 다양한 음악을 정해 주니까 그 중에서 원하는 음악 골라서 들을 수도 있어서 굉장히 편리한 것 같습니다. Also, emotion detection technology is expected to contribute to an increase in music sales through advertising once it is further developed to offer more precise results. 그 얼굴 인식을 통한 서비스들이 가장 제공할 서비스 중에서는 인지도가 높은 데다가 또 뭔가 좀 차별화된 것 같다. 그런 반응이 굉장히 많았습니다. On top of that, a wide range of other targeted ads based on GPS and subscriber information have been adopted in the mobile ecosystem. With high smartphone penetration rate, South Korea's mobile device advertisement market is expected to grow to reach nearly 1 billion US dollars in value by 2015. 그 SNS 서비스를 보면 그런 어떤 그각 유저들이 올리는 어떤 그 여러 가지 키워드들 뭐 내가 배고프다라든가 뭐 패션에 관심이 있다든가 이런 것들을 이제 어느 정도 축적이 되면 그걸 이제 빅데이터 아날리시스에서 아이 소비자의 어떤 취향 같은 거를 이제 텍스트 베이스로 이제 파악을 할 수가 있고 유저가 많이 사용한 어떤 키워드 같은 걸 바탕으로 그거에 맞는 어떤 배너 광고라든가 이런 거를 보여주는 시스템이 활용이 되고 있다고는 이제 그렇게 알고 있습니다. The advancements in customized advertising technology have led consumers to obtain tailored information and advertisers to carry out effective promotional campaigns. But such targeted ads have raised concerns about the invasion of privacy through leakage of personal information. 굉장히 커스터마이즈가 되면 될수록 또 그만큼 내 개인의 정보에 대한 유출에 대한 어떤 우려는 이제 커질 수밖에 없는데 그런 것들은 앞으로 이제 광고의 주체가 어느 정도까지 이용하겠다는 걸 소비자들한테 확실히 명확하게 알리고 균형을 맞추는 게또 앞으로 이제 광고계가 가지고 있는 숙제라고 생각합니다. The targeted advertising technology has made new trends in the advertising market. In the near future, a person will be able to view the advertisement specially customized for him or her based on the person's mood or interest, instead of indiscriminate ads targeting a mass of people. The first thing we do when we visit a hospital to assess our state of health or a gym to turn up those abs and lose those pounds is a physical checkup. Now, a key point of any physical is the assessment of our BMI, our body mass index, i.e. the ratio between flab and muscle. To do this, you need a specific gadget. Now, our hidden champion this week is the number one manufacturer of this kind of gadget globally. Let's meet in body. People dream of having a healthy body and a nice body shape without being obese. This is why it is important to keep track of the body and find an exercise that fits the person in order to manage one's health. The key is in getting an accurate physical examination. 
The answer lies in a Korean technology that has become the world's best. You might have experienced going on a certain machine before a physical checkup or before starting an exercise routine. InBody is the machine that makes an analysis of the body's composition and checks on the nutritional balance. A body composition analyzer is frequently used at general hospitals and health examination centers. The medical staff rely on InBody to check on the patient's body composition during a physical examination ahead of treatment. 현재까지 우리가 체성분 상태를 객관적으로 볼수 있는 그런 방법이 없었습니다. 하지만 이 체성분 분석기를 이용을 하면 우리가 환자의 체액의 상태를 객관적으로 살펴볼 수 있고 또 근육이나 지방량 등 체성분 자체도 모니터링 할수 있기 때문에 굉장히 도움이 됩니다. InBody has become an essential machine at gyms amid the trend for maintaining a good body shape coupled with dieting. It's important to know your body first before choosing an exercise. 제가 운동을 제대로 하고 있는 줄 알았는데요. 이번에 인바디 검사를 통해서 하체가 많이 안 좋다는 걸 알게 됐어요. The approach is being welcomed since it can bring quick health results with the exercise that is right for the body type. 트렌드 운동 시작 전에 체지방 측정을 통해서 근육량이나 지방량 얼마큼 가지고 계신지를 확인하고요. 그다음에 운동 순서나 운동 방향에 대해서 저희가 목표를 설정해 드리고 있습니다. The body composition analyzer InBody was created by a Korean company. Up until the 1990s, the body composition analyzers lacked accuracy due to the absence of the right technology. But soon the company Biospace introduced the body composition analyzer into the global market. 체지방을 측정하는 기계에 대해서 의료계에서는 오랫동안 갈급해 왔는데 의사들이 사용하기에 충분히 신뢰도가 있고 또 가격도 비교적 저렴한 그런 기계로 만들어졌다 라는 점에서 어떤 비만을 측정하는 데 어떤 솔루션을 제공했다 이렇게 볼수 있겠습니다. The earlier form of analyzer, which was the bioelectrical impedance analysis, used the short frequency measurement, which was not only inaccurate, but also showed many variables. Biospace developed InBody as the world's first commercial BIA body composition measurement equipment that uses multiple frequency to measure the entire body region. 인체는 약 60%가 수분으로 이루어져 있는 굉장히 좋은 전도체인데요. 체내 수분량이 많으면 전기가 잘 통과하고 수분량이 적으면 전기가 잘 통과하지 못합니다. 이렇게 전기가 잘 통과하지 못하는 정도를 임피던스라고 하는데요. 인바디는 인체에 매우 약한 전기를 흘렸을 때 어, 체내 수분량이 많고 적음에 따라 달라지는 임피던스를 분석해서 체수분량을 정량적으로 분석하는 장비입니다. The InBody body region measurement allows accurate and detailed data gathering by dividing both arms, legs and torso. In order to get a more accurate data, the intracellular water and extracellular water is analyzed by using the broadband multiple frequency between 1 kHz and 1 MHz. By incorporating the characteristics of body structure, current and voltage, Electrodes are placed at both hands and two feet so the body touches on or steps on eight voltage points, which is the reason for an accurate examination. In the past, measurement had to be adjusted according to gender and age, but with InBody, direct measurement can calculate an accurate body composition. First timers are not comfortable about letting electricity flow inside their body due to concerns of possible danger. 인바디에서 사용하는 전류는 80에서 440 마이크로암페아의 미세 전류를 사용하고 있습니다. 이 미세 전류를 사용하는 것에 대해서 국내 및 국제 안전 규격을 통과한 장비로서 인체 적용 시 전혀 이상이 없음을 증명하고 있습니다. The company holds the number one spot in domestic market share with a competitive edge from its technology for making the body composition analyzer. Government offices, hospitals and gyms in 50 countries around the world have the InBody product. The growing level of interest over the issue of obesity, health and well-being led to the need for InBody, which is being utilized in areas of treatment and exercise. Led by an increasing awareness over the importance of body composition, 
InBody has become the world standard in body composition analyzers and a representative brand name. 질병의 치료의 목적은 환자의 체력을 유지를 해서 사회생활을 지속적으로 할수 있게 하는 것이 제일 큰 목적이기 때문에 그러한 체력을 유지시키는 데 객관적인 데이터를 가지고 비교하고 치료의 방향을 설정하는 데 도움이 된다고 할수 있겠습니다. 저희는 모두 자기의 키, 키와 몸무게가 얼마인지 알고 있는데 앞으로는 사람들이 에, 거기다가 나의 체지방률은 얼마큼이다 이렇게까지 알게 될 것이다 라고 생각이 되고요. 어, 또 가정에서 우리가 어, 체중을 측정하는 체중계가 있는데 이런 것들이 다 체지방을 같이 보여주는 그런 장비로 바뀌어 나갈 것이다 라고 생각하고 있습니다. The medical field has broadened its spheres from hospitals to households. This means that technology has led the evolution for medical services to become more accessible to people. InBody is now an essential tool for checking the health of the global community, which is something no other Korean product has achieved. This has certainly upgraded the status for Korea's medical technology. Midnight on 27th July 1953, a strange silence, one unheard for three years, descended across the devastated Korean Peninsula. An armistice to end the carnage that had started on June 25th, 1950, had taken effect. Now, while a peace treaty to end the Korean War has never yet been signed, the armistice did, de facto, end the killing. In our North Korean segment, we take a look at the 60th anniversary of this armistice, an armistice which ended the fighting but left the nation divided against itself. After 60 long years of what seems like a permanent split, Korea is the only divided country left in the world. The Korean War broke out at dawn on Sunday, June 25th, 1950, with the Communist North's unexpected military incursion into South Korea. 당시 우리 남북한 인구가 3천만 명이었는데 어, 그 중에 죽은 사람만 어, 300만 가까이 되고요. 부상자까지 포함하면 500만 명이 즉 전체 인구의 5분의 1이 죽거나 다친 그런 그 어, 희생을 치렀습니다. We have stopped the shooting. That means much to the fighting men and their families. The destructive war came to an end with the signing of the Korean Armistice Agreement on July 27th of 1953. <laughs> 지금 벌써 어, 60년이 이렇게 지났군요. 그런데 그 동안에 여러 가지 에, 그 휴전 협정은 하긴 하지만은 이거 종전이 아니에요. The armistice talks were officially launched on July 10th, 1951. General Peck, then commander of the First Corps of the South Korean Army, was appointed to represent the South's military during the first three months of the negotiations. The negotiations were tough from the very beginning. 그 사람들이 그 준비한 지부 차에는 백기를 달았어요. 그래서 우리를 태워 가지고 하는데 이 손전은 자기네한테 항복하러 지금 왔다. 회담을 시작하는데 이건 중립 지대라고 하는데 중공군이 에 갑자기 무장한 부대가 우리 앞을 또 지나갔어요. 이게 무슨 뜻이냐 말이지. The armistice agenda was composed of five parts. Adoption of the agenda, fixing the military demarcation line and the demilitarized zone, concrete arrangements of the realization of ceasefire and armistice, repatriation of prisoners of war, and recommendations to the governments of the countries concerned on both sides. After the agenda was decided, negotiations proceeded slowly and took two years and 40 days to reach agreements. Why? 
first because of the difficulties regarding the location of the border between South and North Korea. 공산 군축이 38선에서 그 다시 그 휴전을 하자 이렇게 제안을 하게 되는데 그렇게 제안을 했던 가장 큰 이유는 어 당시에 동해와 서해 쪽으로 모든 해양과 도서를 다 장악을 하고 있었어요. 그렇기 때문에 38선으로 이걸 긋게 되면은 거기에 있는 해군들을 다 밀어낼 수가 있었던 거죠. 그래서 결국은 교전선에서 휴전을 하는 것이, 것으로 그렇게 합의가 되죠. 이 과정이 상당히 이제 지리하게 오랫동안 끌게 됩니다. And thus the DMZ was created, a strip of land 4 kilometers wide and 250 kilometers long, which serves as a buffer zone between the two Koreas. The biggest issue that prolonged the armistice process was the repatriation of the POWs. 포로 송환 문제와 관련해서 1949년 제네바 협정이 있었어요. 그 제네바 협정은 전쟁 포로는 무조건 송환한다라고 하는 원칙을 세워놨었어요. 이 원칙을 적용을 해가지고 당시에 그 남쪽에 포로로 잡혀 있었던 공산군들을 전부 송환해라라는 그런 요구를 하게 되는데. 유엔 측에서 잡았던 포로들 중에 11% 정도는 원래 남한 사람입니다. 남한 사람인데 그 사람들은 북한에 갈 리가 없죠. 미국 측에서는 빨리 전쟁을 끝내기 위해서 그런 걸 처음에는 들어주려고 그랬다고. 거기에 대해서 미국 쪽이 이승만 정부가 반대를 하고 방공포를 석방하고 그랬던 거죠. The issue of the POWs was settled by establishing a neutral nations repatriation commission to handle the matter. It is also noteworthy that South Korea's first president, Lee Seung-man, released 25,000 anti-communist North Korean POWs without the consent of the U.S. It was an act of protest against the armistice. Lee Seung-man is not a communist Americans. So, they will be sent back to the U.S. 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 to the armistice was designed to ensure a complete cessation of hostilities and of all acts of armed force in Korea until a final peaceful settlement is achieved. However, North Korea has violated and ignored the agreement on numerous occasions in the past. 쌍방이 합의해서 체결된 협정이기 때문에 어느 일방이 일방적으로 그걸 파기할 수가 없죠. 그러나 이제 에, 북한은 오래 전부터 그 정전 협정을 종이장 정도로 생각했던 것은 또 사실이에요. The communist regime should remember the armistice was a mutual agreement and must start taking appropriate steps to abide by the terms. It is better late than never to achieve a final peaceful settlement and ultimately end the 60-year-long tragic division of the two Koreas. And that's all we have time for on BizLine today. In our next edition, we'll be looking at one of the steps South Korea is taking to reduce its massively problematic household debt. We'll also be discussing Konex, the brand new stock exchange for small businesses. So for those stories and more, do please tune in again next week. I'm Andrew Salmon. This was BizLine. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.